Sorry I ended that to the last video so abruptly. It, I, I started recording some stuff and I thought it would be epic and it ended up turning out really bad. So I decided let's break the, all those concepts out into, into little videos. We have here our triangle. We have a red vertex up here. It is positioned at 0 on the X, 1 on the Y, 0 on the X, 1 on the Y. Its color is red, so there is red but no green and no blue. The next vertex is our green vertex. It is positioned at negative 1 on the X, negative 1 on the Y, negative 1 on the X, negative 1 on the Y. Here is the green vertex. It is all green, no red, no blue. The last vertex is our blue vertex down here, positioned at positive 1 on the X, negative 1 on the Y, positive 1, negative 1, and it is all blue, no red, no green. Hopefully this is old hat. We've seen this triangle before. We have positional data, color data, positional data, color data, positional data, color data. And that's fine and dandy for a simple triangle like this, but but really this this type of data gets kind of hard to deal with once in a while. It's like, okay, we've got position, color, and then it's position three, or is it two elements, or uh, is it a four-dimensional vector, and is color, is, does color have that alpha thing on the end? And, yeah, it's, it's just uh, too much to maintain in my head. So instead, we like to use our programming language, C++ in this case, to our advantage. And I'm going to come up here and say struct vertex, and we shall say float x, y, z for positional data, float r, g, b for color data. And now I can come in here instead of saying gl float ray, I can say vertex array. And at least now I get an idea that, okay, uh, this looks like positional data, this looks like color data. There's three elements in the position, three elements in the color, so this is positional, this is color, so on and so forth. And if I build this, run this, the data is identical in RAM, nothing's changed. We still have our red, green, blue triangle. Quite nice, but I think we can do better. This is an element of three, this is an element of three, and this is really a vector. We're starting to get into vector stuff, and I'll help you along the way, but if you really want to understand vectors, again, my game programming playlist, I go into all the nitty-gritty details of vectors. Struct vector, and I'll come in here and say float x, y, z, and now instead of saying float x, y, z right here, I can say vector position, and vector color. Obviously, one disadvantage to this approach is now my color stores an XYZ instead of an RGB, but really a color is a vector. If you do enough color math, and we'll do plenty of color stuff, you realize, hey, colors behave a lot like vectors. That's kind of cool. I can control F5 this, run it, and you see that we have the exact same result. The data is stored identically in RAM, and when we send that down to the hardware, that's, nothing's changed. And even what's better is I can say my try sub one let's look at vertex number one i can say hey what is your color x okay or what is your positions z i uh, get this nice convenient way of programming as far as c plus plus provides for us and that feels good and we get the data represented in an identical manner but this vector you know God, didn't we just add that GLM library? I bet GLM being a math library, specifically a linear algebra 3D math library, would already have a vector in it. Go figure. So I'm going to delete all that and say, you know what? I'm going to use GLM vec, vec 3. Okay, that's vector of 3 for the position. And I'm going to say GLM vector of three for the color. But then we get all these red squigglies down here saying, oh, well, these things got constructors and you have to create them in weird ways. So now I have to go as far as saying, well, uh, alt drag glm colon colon vec three parenthesis. And then over here, let's do a closing parenthesis. And then, oh, look, I got this empty one in the middle. Control L, control enter, control L, control enter. And we're back. We're golden. Control F5. Build this. The data is still stored identically. I get the exact same triangle. And what's even better with this GLM Vec3, they did some magic on their end. You can go look up. It's actually pretty cool how they did it. But I can say my try sub 1 
dot position dot y. Okay, exact same thing we had before. And I can say dot oh, sub one dot color. Here's the cool part. I can say dot, dot color y. That y will give me the red. Okay, R G B X Y Z Y corresponds with red. Or I can say R and that will give me the exact same value for red. So ah GLM, they did a good job there. Control F five. Build that and run that and hey, very cool. Very cool. But you know, I bet I bet I just might want to use this vertex in more than one place later. And I really don't like putting too much stuff inside of one file anyway, or at least avoid it as much as possible. You'll see as we go along a tutorial, sometimes I'll fill up one file with a whole bunch of stuff. So I'm going to say Control Alt L, go to the Solution Explorer, right click here, add new folder. You can't see it off the screen. I'll call this folder Primitives. Hit enter. Right click, add new item, header file. And let's call it vertex. And enter. Here's my vertex h. Pound pragma once. Okay. Pound, pound pragma once is like a header guard. If you want to go watch my header guard videos, you can. But I'm going to just say pragma once because I know my compiler supports it. And I get tired of saying pound if not define, pound define, pound end if. That gets a little old. Let's uh, make a new vertical tab group out of this. Grab this vertex. Control X. Control V, and then pound include that vertex over here. Pound include primitives. <laughs> vertex. Control F5. Oh, why did I? Ah, look at me. I'm not being consistent with how I'm pound including here. Pound include. Uh, you know what? Didn't we do the angle brackets? I thought we, we added the project directory so I could do the angle brackets always and forever. I think we did do that. And good. We get our same triangle. Okay, so now we have a vertex struct, and we have a better way of representing our data. And let's move on and see if we can get closer to displaying a cube onto the screen.